When you think of cinema, when you think of quality content, the first name that usually jumps to mind is Sony Entertainment. Yes, yes. I can't even say it with a straight face. I'm here with Tony from Hack the Movies, and we are going to give some predictions on another fun video we've been doing all week on the channel. I mean, we don't have a segment for this. I just kind of like led into nothing. I was like building up nothing there. Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here. That was a bit much. That was a little, little much, but we'll allow it. Uh, we're going to be doing Craven. What is this called? Craven, Craven the Hunter, Hunter, I assume it will be called. Oh, Jesus. We're going to be talking Craven the Hunter. It's a Sony vehicle. Let's begin. Tony, it may shock you to know that I know nothing about Craven. Why don't you fill me really? in? Really? Yeah, why don't you fill me in? You, you, well, you didn't watch any of the Spider-Man animated series? I dabbled here and there. I was more on the X-Men camp. Okay, okay. I, I watched a lot of them. Uh, Craven is my favorite Spider-Man villain. Wow. Uh, he is a guy who spent time in the jungle. Um, it's been a minute since I've read or watched the cartoons, but I believe he has some kind of genetic thing that makes his, like, senses heightened. Uh, kind of like, uh, what is he, like, Black, Black Panther? Something like that, yeah, oh, on par with that. Uh, so he's able to, like, you know, he's good at hunting and whatnot. He's, he becomes, like, a predator. Uh, and I think he goes to New York at one point to hunt Spider-Man. Uh, and he ends up being a very popular... Spider-Man villain, uh, and there was a famous story arc where he actually buried Spider-Man. Like, he caught Spider-Man and buried him alive. And then he, just for funsies, dressed up like Spider-Man and started acting like Spider-Man. And then he killed himself when he realized his job was done. That was called Craven's Last Hunt. Uh, he's got, like, a funny Russian accent. Uh, he's a badass. He can kick the shit out of Spider-Man. Uh, he wears a cool lion. Like, his outfit is literally a lion head that was split in half and turned into a vest. Jesus. Uh, and he has, like, cheetah print pants. Um, yeah, and he's just pretty, pretty awesome. That sounds pretty cool. I mean, it sounds like he's quite the baller. So, if you think cool villain, one of your favorite Spider-Man villains, I assume you're super pumped about the actor, one of your favorite actors, Aaron Taylor-Joy, playing the character. Aaron Taylor-Johnson, who everyone liked in Kick-Ass, and then he was boring in the Godzilla reboot. Bet you didn't see that was... coming. <sighs> yeah, he was in Avengers Age of Ultron, where at least he got killed. That was fine. Uh, yeah, he hasn't... I don't hate him, but uh, he never really excites me. I remember he showed up in Tenet, and I he was totally bland in that. Did you see him in Bullet uh, Train? Because that's the first time I was like, oh, wow, he he's actually pretty pretty damn cool. I still have not seen him in Bullet Train. It is weird when you go back and watch Kick-Ass, how, like, lively he was mm -hmm. and, like, comedic. And then the bulkier he got, like, just the more serious and bland he got. I'm like, I did not expect that career path for him. <laughs> he's like, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But here's the thing, Adam. I've always wanted Craven the Hunter in a Spider-Man movie. Well, now you're going to get a Craven the Hunter in not a Spider-Man movie. So there you go. And you know, the biggest disappointment is it's Spider-Man No Way Home. You know, when the sky opens up and you see like the silhouettes of his villains. Sure. One of them was Craven the Hunter. You see Craven with the lion and he's got like the spear. And I was like, sweet, Craven in the MCU. Can't wait for it. And then Sony's like, no, it's going to be part of the Sony Spider-Man spinoffs without Spider-Man. And I went... No! I got That's so, so angry. angry. Is that real? You could see that stuff? I don't remember that. You have to, it, like, when you see it in the theater, you have to, like, pause. I, I caught it in the theater, but they have a bunch of, like, obscure... They have a bunch of, like, popular villains that you just see the outlines of. So this is the... This is, like, the old-school Disney thing they did where they'd put, like, sex in the flowers. And <laughs> no, because I, if I remember right, I think you could even see, like, Rhino in the clouds, but it's not the Paul Giamatti Rhino. It looks like traditional Rhino. Uh, so yeah, I, I really would have loved to have seen the Tobey Maguire fighting Kraven, but instead we're going to have Kraven fighting the guy from Jurassic Park 3 and, uh, Con Air. You know yeah. who else is listed on IMDb is Russell Crowe. What? Yeah, he's listed on IMDb in some part of this film. <sighs> Hopefully he's a character similar to the performance he did as Zeus in Thor, Love and Thunder. Wasn't that amazing? 
Yeah, or uh, the terrible Man of Steel movie. He, Russell Crowe should not be in superhero films. He really should not be in superhero films. He's got a bad track record. And every time he does them, the interview is always like, why did you choose this role? He's like, ah, my grandkids or my kids told me to do it, so I did it. That's it. That's his passion for it. He's got all the money he needs. He's just like, eh, whatever, whatever they want. Well, which kid do you think told him to beat Dr. Jekyll in the Mummy reboot? <sighs> Where he says Tom Cruise is a younger man, but I think in real life Tom Cruise is older than Russell Crowe. Oh my, you know what? To be fair, if you see it, it's a Tom Cruise movie, he's, Cruise has some really good betting odds in his favor. Yeah. Like, he usually puts out gold, but man, fucking yeah. Mummy was terrible. That was bad. That was terrible. Bad. So, Adam, before we get into this, I need to know, like, what... what? How do you feel about Sony's efforts so far with Venom 1 and 2 and Morbius? I hate them. I hate all of them. Like, Venom 1 is is barely a passable movie, and it reminds me of those, like, B-list movies that came out in the early 2000s, like Jonah Hex or Elektra. I'll even throw yeah. Daredevil in the mix. Okay. It's just, they're ugly-looking movies. They're not very fun. The effects also remind me of the early 2000s <laughs> when it's like, all right, our budget's low. So we don't want our characters to stand still very long. So we're going to like make them jerk around the screen a lot really fast. <laughs> we have a saying on the show. I think the Venom movies are fine and fun. They're more fun than fine. I enjoy Tom Hardy in them. Uh, I actually enjoy like the, the buddy sort of drama between Venom and Eddie Brock. I didn't, th Venom's not one of my favorite characters. I think he looks cool, but I think he only has one really good story. So I think me going in with low expectations made those movies work for me. Uh, I enjoyed the second one to to a point. Oh my God, Let There Be Garbage? That movie was yes. terrible. That was like an hour and 20 minutes. It was like the most bare bones movie they could make. So he's like, let's just shit this out. No, it's all worth it for the scene where Venom goes to that club and he talks about being an alien and getting into a fight with a man. So everyone thinks he's an immigrant who's gay. gay. Oh, that's right. <laughs> they're like misunderstanding what he's saying. And I'm like, you know what? The movie was worth it for this scene alone. He's talking about literally being an alien who got into a fight with a guy. And everyone's like, this illegal immigrant in that cool costume is talking about their gay boyfriend. <laughs> uh, but then there was Morbius. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I, I'm not done yeah. with, I'm not done with uh, this last one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just get a kick out of the fact that it's called Let There Be Carnage. And the entire plot revolves around Carnage breaking out of prison and getting married. <laughs> like that's, yeah. that's their idea of mass hysteria on a grand scale. <laughs> Just pure carnage. I'm going to get married to that mutant chick over there. <laughs> I can't believe Andy Serkis directed that. I guess it's whatever. Did he really? Uh, he directed it, yeah. What is his deal? Like, he's directing some of the shittiest... Or he's just making like really poor choices because he also did that Jungle Book live action. Well, live action. How? I didn't see that. It came out the same year as the other one. But like eight no, months no, 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 no. later. It got delayed. It got delayed because they ended up putting it on Netflix. It was supposed to come out in theaters and they put it on Netflix. Well, that's even worse. So the hype is all yeah. completely gone at that point for Jungle Book. And then they put it out like a year later. Just, just so bizarre. Yeah. Anyway, on to the center stage. We have Morbi shit. What'd you think of that? I did enjoy the memes for a bit, but no, Morbius. Morbius was not fine or fun. Morbius was garbage. Yeah, Morbus. That, that was not good. As much as I enjoy the Venom movies, I even I will tell you that they are not winners. Uh, so yeah, I am not excited for this Craven movie. Um, I'm predicting it, like, cause so so you're gonna have Craven and he's coming to New York because he just got he was in the jungle. And he did the whatever thing that made them all heightened. Do you think uh, that they go into his origin or do you think they're going to forego this? No, they're going to go to his origin. So you think I they're going to do the Morbius and the Venom thing where we have to spend the first like 40 minutes of this movie having him do the yeah. jungle shit. Gosh, this and, is so tedious. And they're going to do a thing like even though he's the hunter, I bet you he's in the jungle and he's stopping poachers from hurting the animals. Ah, uh, yeah. So he's, he's an anti-hero. He's an anti-hero. Yep. And he goes to New York and he runs around barefoot. And I'm only saying that because I'm looking at a behind the scenes photo. And he has those funny fake feet that they use for running scenes. John McClane, Die Hard 1 feet. The plot is first 35, 40 minutes, his origin story of him being in the jungle. He comes to New York. 
Why is he going to New York? Are, are, po are poachers maybe taking out his friends? Yeah, or they could be taking out his friends. Or he did have, like, a girlfriend in the cartoon, and I think the comics. Maybe she's there, and now she's being threatened. Uh, but no, Adam, I just realized I know who the villain's going to be. Oh. It's going to be just a different version of Craven Because in Venom 1, Black Venom fought Grey Venom. Yep. And then in Venom 2... Black Venom fought Red Venom. Kind of. And then in Morbius, Long-Haired Vampire fought short hair Vampire. And in Iron Man 1, Big Iron Man fights Little Iron Man. And in Ant-Man, Ant-Man yeah. fights other Ant-Man. Yeah, this is this yeah. is kind of what we do, especially with Sony. They're, they have a very good track record. Yes, and it's going to be in New York, and they're not going to mention Spider-Man at all. And based off how bad Morbius was, they're probably not going to try to connect him. Because Morbius tried to connect to Venom. Yeah. And, and then they, they changed their, and then everyone hated Morbius. So they're like, maybe we're not going to mention it. Well, what about Vulture? What about the Vulture at the end? Remember they had Vulture show up from No Way Home. He's like, oh, I could get used to this. Is Michael Keaton in yeah. this movie? I don't know. Remember they changed his dialogue for the home video release. They, they made it so he doesn't mention Spider-Man in the home video release. I, I honestly didn't know that. Because when it hit home video, apparently they got rid of the, the Spider-Man thing. So I think they were trying to build up, even though they just did the Sinister Six in No Way Home. Which is funny because the sixth person was Venom who accidentally got sent to South America. That was kind of funny that there's the Sinister Six where the six guys just getting shit-faced in a bar. Um, I think they're trying to build up their own Sony Sinister Six. Uh, they're trying to do this whole Sony Spider-Man universe without Spider-Man. They're going to have a line in there where Craven is going to see some dead animals and yeah. his girlfriend's going to be there too. And she's going to be like, Craven, what kind of animal did this? A, a falcon maybe? And he's going to look and he's going to say, no, something bigger, a vulture perhaps. And then he's going to wink at the camera mm -hmm. and then they're going to cut to Michael Keaton's vulture. Or they're going to set up the next Sony spy. Oh, there's another Sony Spider-Man movie coming. Uh, El Muerto. What? Starring uh, inter uh, international pop star Bad Bunny. This is, I actually don't even know who this character is. It's a luchador. It's a wrestler, but not the wrestler we know Spider-Man for beating up. Uh, apparently there's some character called El Muerto and they're getting Bad Bunny to play him. Of course they are. Now they're making Spider-Man spinoffs that don't have anything to do with Spider-Man with totally irrelevant characters. Sony has like one of the worst deals in existence outside of just retaining like some of the profits for Spider-Man. I think they make a good chunk of money off of uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man. But then Marvel's like, here are the five other characters you get. And it's like down the page, 400 pages in. And that's what they have yeah. to work with. In Venom, he looked like Venom minus the white spider on his on his chest. But they gave him, like, white veins. Morbius, they gave him a black outfit, which I, which I think he had, like, purple trim underneath. But he didn't have the full-on vampire suit. Do you think Craven the Hunter is going to wear a, a lion vest with uh, leopard print pants and ballerina-type looking shoes like he does in the comics? I would imagine no. I would guess no to that. Do you, Do you think they'll at least give him the lion vest? I feel like you need him to have the split face lion vest. He's going to have like a leather jacket that has like a little bit of fur on the top or something. That's going to be the, that's going to be it for him. <sighs> yeah, I can see the jacket with the fur. They made that work for Vulture, how he had the flight jacket yeah, that kind of mimicked the Vulture. That's what they're going to do. But like... But, like, Craven, I don't know if you looked up a picture of what Craven looks like. He literally wears a lion face that's split in half, turned into a vest. Like, you can't... <sighs> I don't see Aaron Taylor Johnson, like, pulling that off. I could see, like, Dwayne The Rock Johnson pulling that off because he did in that shitty Hercules movie. He kind of had yeah. something like that. But, yeah, I don't think it's a good look for Aaron Taylor. That, I mean, the thing would be massive on him. Every picture I'm seeing of Aaron Taylor is him in a black t-shirt or white shirt with a, uh, a necklace with one tooth. That's all I'm seeing. That will be 80% of this movie. It's going to be just terrible. It's going to be terrible. Do you think that it's going to uh, lead into any further Sony properties? Do you think there's going to be any cliffhangers? Do you think anybody else is going to jump in? I don't know. They got they they were trying to set that up with Morbius, but the reaction to Morbius was so negative. And a lot of that was the advertising. Because the advertising made it seem like Spider-Man was in the movie. 
and it was in the MCU. And even I think even the director was like, I have no idea why any of that shit was in the trailer. Wait, don't they have a Ma- Madam Web coming out also? That's right. They have the Madam Web movie. The Fifty Shades of Grey chick. Yeah, who I actually really like. She was really good in the Suspiria remake. But yeah, so I don't know. I as much as I think the Venom movies are fun, this whole expanded Sony universe where they have. It's almost like the DCEU. They have no idea what they're doing. It's all uniformly bad, whereas DCEU or DCU now uh, is just kind of like chunks of some decent stuff and then bad stuff and good. Sony at least has a consistent theme of awfulness all the way through their products. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder if they're like trying to figure out which Spider-Man to put it. Like, obviously they can't do Tom Holland. I mean, they could, but like Morbius led us to believe that there is a Spider-Man in that universe. And it's like, what Spider-Man is it? Andrew Garfield would probably make the most sense. They wedged him into the Uncharted movies as Nathan Drake. He doesn't look, sound, or have any characteristics of Nathan Drake. So Sony's got a nice contract with him. They're going to find any way they can to get Tom Holland in that movie. Although people are now pretending that the Andrew Garfield movies are good again. No. No, He had a good performance in the new movie. He's all, but I think Andrew Garfield's a great actor and he is good as Spider-Man. He's just not very likable as Peter Parker in those movies. And those movies no. also kind of suck. So no, those movies are awful. Like, pe- like people were like kind of getting nostalgic for him. Like, no, it's cool that there's multiple Spider-Mans and why wouldn't you put him in a movie with multiple Spider-Mans? But like, no, those movies are really bad. As we get older, Tony, we're going to see new generations that grew up watching like the Star Wars prequels. We mm. mostly thought they were trash but then another generation behind us saw them when they were like five and they thought they were cool and they grew up with it. So therefore they're cool. That's just how it goes. I guess, I guess I'm the opposite because I grew up with uh, the Stallone Judge Dredd thinking that was awesome. And then the other one came out and I was like, oh no, younger me was stupid. This is way better. I don't know why people younger than me don't have that. Like what hat did the internet break people where they no longer have that switch where they're like, Oh, now that I'm older, this is bad. Well, we don't really, I mean, I guess I don't really talk to a lot of real people anymore. So (laughs) the people in the comments may genuinely be 13 or 14 years old. (laughs) That's true. true. (laughs) But yeah, I hear you. I watched like three ninjas until the tape didn't work anymore. And that movie is embarrassingly bad. (laughs) Dude, I, I did a whole video years back where I love the first Mortal Kombat movie, but I did a whole video essay about how it makes not one lick of sense. Oh, yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> yeah. That movie's at least still fun to watch, though, even though it's campy as hell. You know what won't be fun to watch? Craven the Hunter. Way to bring it back, Tony. That's why you're here. He's going to go to New York and figure out, like, who's trying to steal the Craven juice, and it's going to be the guy from Con Air, uh, and and they're, they're going to they're gonna fight on a green screen. And then Craven will use the power of the animals, whether he'll physically use animals or if he'll just use his animal instincts to outdo the other Craven guy. I'm going to say Craven isn't Craven at all. He's a regular Aaron Taylor Johnson. He's going to get into the woods somehow. Something's going to go awry and he's going to get the Craven abilities because Sony's been doing this every time with these characters. So that's what they're going to do. He's going to be regular Joe going to the woods get a new spice of life with the animals, and then he's back. That's my guess. Yes. Yep. Yes. It's going to be terrible either way. Either way, it's going to be terrible. Tony, I appreciate you coming on. It's been fun. Where can they find you? You can find me at Hack the Movies uh, every oh, on YouTube or HackTheMovies.com. Every Monday, we put out a new episode of my podcast, which you can also find anywhere podcasts are found. And I also do smaller videos or sometimes live episodes like I did with Adam a while back. And uh, yeah, I've actually reviewed all the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies into the Spider-Verse 1 and Spider-Man No Way Home if you want to check those out. Uh, And I have a Patreon where we have commentary tracks and all that other fun stuff. Tony, you pumped for Into the Spider-Verse 2? Yeah, I'm excited for that one. I love the first one. You like the first one? Yeah, I really enjoyed the first one. Good, we're going out on a positive note. We like to do that here once in a while. All right, thanks for (laughs) watching the video. Like if you had a good time. Subscribe if you want to see more of my ass around the internet. And uh, I'll catch you then. Take care. Bye. Bye.